Every now and then you run across a small tool or library that fixes some particular use case in a really smart way. And that's the case with React Toastify. If you're a React developer and you need to show some kind of toast message, then I highly recommend jumping into React Toastify. Not only can you pass along specific messages like a success message or a warning message, but you can also use it with promises so that if it succeeds, you show one message, and if it's rejected, you show a different message. Now, it's really easy to get started, and they actually have a little interactive tutorial here on their site where you can actually test it out yourself. So here I am. I've got all this stuff set up the way I want, and then I can just show Toast and see it right here. Now, I've got it to where it pauses when I hover over it. In fact, I also have it when I pull off the tab, it actually is going to pause it. So when I move back, it's right where it was at. I can dismiss it myself. I can drag it off. All these things are options. Here's the promise one. It's pending. And then finally, it's going to either succeed. In this case, it did or it would fail. There's a bunch of smart little features included in this, and I want to show it to you now. Let's jump right in. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris, and welcome to Coding in Public. Let's go ahead and start a React project from scratch to kind of show you how you would get this set up. So I'm going to say npm create vite at latest, and let's go ahead and get this up and running. We'll call this Toastify, and then I do want to use React, and JavaScript is just fine. All right, so let's go inside Toastify, and I'm going to npm install it. And then let me go ahead and open this up in VS Code, and I'll be right back with you. All right, I've got VS Code open and the docs over on the right. Let me go ahead and just install React Toastify. And let's see, let's grab it right here. Since I'm using npm, and I'll install this. And now that's really all you need to do. It's really easy to get started with. You can see that you got to do two things. One is you have to add a toast container somewhere in your application. You'll just do that once. And then to show a toast, you simply call the toast function. So let's go ahead and get uh, this folder up and running. Let's see. Let's see what the default comes with. It looks like we can click on this button and increment the count. So let me let me go ahead and get this thing up and running with npm run dev. And then I'm simply going to grab this right here, this toast container. And maybe the best thing to do if I'm going to use this throughout my application is just to add it on the actual main tag right here. Once again, you only need to add toast container once in your application. So let me go ahead and just add it down here. And then I can not import toast because I won't need it right here, but I do want to go ahead and import the CSS, which you can customize. And I'll try to remember to show you that as we get going. Okay, so now it's actually installed and ready to go. Let me open up the project. And now let's actually use the first toast function. So over here, what I'm going to do is when I click rather than increment the count, or maybe in addition to incrementing the count, we can actually show a toast message. So let's come back over to the app.js. I'm going to close this down. And I'm going to go ahead and paste back in that import. And in this case, all we need is the toast itself. So with the single toast container component already on my page, now I can simply reference this toast function. So to keep everything in line, let's go ahead and just do this in line down here rather than returning set count. Let's go ahead and do set count and then also show a toast. So the toast, I could say something like cool beans. All right. I'm not sure what that's about, but here we go. I come over here, I click on this, and I should see cool beans. All right, so there it goes. That's at its most basic. You can customize this in a bunch of different ways, uh, like we could show the different counts. We could customize the actual experience. And to do that, the easiest way is really to run over to their doc examples and just play around with the different options available to you. Now, you can do this in a couple different ways. If you always want the toast to always show the exact same way, then you can actually set all of these different properties on the toast container. However, you can also just use the toast admitter, this toast function, and pass them in to kind of override those. So what I'm going to do is just worry about setting on the toast itself rather than the toast container. That way we can be really flexible, and I can show you a bunch of different things all at the same time. The default, I think, is what we've got right here, which is what you just saw. But you can see that I can set it top left, top center, bottom right, whatever I want. I can show different kinds of messages depending on what I want to show. I can show a theme of light or dark mode. I can decide whether or not it closes automatically, how it transitions in, the progress, the limit. If I want to hide the, the progress bar that goes along the bottom, close it on click. All of these things are options. So let's go ahead and disable auto close. Let's do, uh, let's pause delay on hover. Let's take that off. I'm going to update this and then show a toast message. This is what it looks like now based on everything that I did. I can actually drag it off because I've got it set right here. I guess I have to drag it to the right. Okay, good to know. Um, so I've got here on warning. Let's go ahead and change it to error or maybe success. And let's go back to light mode, put it top right, show toast one more time. And there we go up top here. Again, I can drag it off to the right and everything works properly. So let's say I wanted it to be like that. Um, let's do a multicolored one 
and let's go back to the default. What I can do is just actually copy all of this, and this is just an options object you can pass in. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that after my message, then I'll just pass in this. Now, if I jump back over to my app and I click this, and there we go. So those are the customizations. It's not going to auto-close because I've set, set it that way. I've hidden the progress bar, all of that. So you can customize it to your heart's content, and really the easiest way is just to play around with it on their site. Now let's go ahead and refresh to get rid of that since it's not going to auto-close, and let me show you a couple of other things. Now I showed you in the intro the way that you can work with promises here, so I can actually pass it a promise, and when it's pending, it will be pending. When it rejects, it will show a rejected message. Sometimes it will show a success message if the promise is successful. Hopefully, most of the time, it will show it that way. Now, when would you use this? Well, let's say you're submitting a form and you want to know whether or not that submission was successful so that you can tell the person, hey, we got your submission, or hey, we didn't get it, there was a problem. You could do all of that with this nice little toast uh, function. So let's go ahead and come down here, and when I pass in toast, I'll do toast dot, and then I can pass in promise. Now, just to make sure I get this right, let me jump back over to their docs, and let's see. I guess I will search for promise. Handling promises, here we go. And I suppose rather than reinventing the wheel, let me just go ahead and copy this out so I don't have to do it myself. And let's add, let's see, let's just add this one up here. You can see I could do toast.promise, then I pass it some promise. Now, in this case, this would be like your submission thing. Now, you're not going to pass await the promise. You're just going to pass the promise itself. It will handle all of that state for you. So I'll pass it just like this. And here we go. Then I'll pass it three different things. First of all, I will pass it a pending message. So this is when it first submits it. And we're waiting back on that promise, then a success message, and finally an error message. So let's come over here, and maybe for this success message, I pass it something like count is now, and then I do count. Now in this case, I think that count is gonna be one step behind, but just to show you how it works, if I click on here, it says count is now zero, even though it's now one, that's because the way that React handles this state, so maybe I could extract this variable out, or maybe we just do count plus one to be lazy right now. All right, so count plus one, how about that? All right, so it'll basically just tell me, hey, promise is pending, promise is pen pending, count is now two. Not that I couldn't see that down here. Now, if I were to reject it for some reason, so let's come back up here, and let me pass a reject message. And now in this case, I'm gonna reject it, so let's go ahead and click it. After three seconds, or however long this says, it will now reject it, and I get my special message just for that promise being rejected. So super helpful when you're working with promises, and I just really like the functionality of this. Couldn't be easier. Now, one thing to note real quick, and that is how to customize the CSS. So let me come over here, and let's see, override CSS variables. So this is the easiest way I know of to override stuff. You can actually just set the CSS variables for any of the different things you want to do. That also means that if you change state between light and dark mode, you can just pass this your custom CSS variable, however you're writing your CSS, and it will work for you just fine. So to briefly show you that, let me go ahead and just grab this. Let's open up our CSS file. I'm assuming there's something like this, app.css, that'll work. And let's go ahead and add this to our root. Right inside here, let's pass it some different color. There we go, some kind of pink color. I should be able to come over here, and I think I've got it set at light. Oh, no, I don't. All right, so let's change that back. Uh, let's go backwards. All right, there we go. I think we are now in light mode. Hmm, and since that didn't work, let me come down here. Maybe I need to actually set this to light mode. One thing I forgot to mention is that this is all tight. So just a control and space opens up different options you have available to you. So let me set the theme, and let's see, I've got light as an option. And I think if I did all that correctly, I should be able to come over here and click, and no, I still am not getting the right color. So let's come back over here, and let's make sure we figure this out together. You can see there are options only for like the colored theme or how to actually set the progress bar linear gradient across one to the other. All right, looking back up here, it looks like I'm actually using the right variable. I wonder if I just need to do it in my main JS file, but this actually gives me a chance to show you another way to customize this. So let's do that first. So if I come back down this way, not only can you actually overwrite it depending on the different um, like the different things that are being shown, like the position of the icon, which kind of notification is being shown. You can actually customize it really specifically like that. But you can also build out your own styling based on the SAS file if you want to. Uh, you can also actually pass in styles directly to the component. In this case, you're passing it into the Toast container. That's kind of overwriting everything, and I think that's the problem I've got uh, showing over this way. You can also do the same thing over here. So you can actually pass in different styles based on what you want for like a class name for the background. Um, so this is super helpful if you're using Tailwind, for instance. You can pass in these specific things to it, and it will just update it 
based on whatever Tailwind theme you're using and uh, your color theme you're using, and you can pass it in directly to the test container. You can also use it as a function. So here you've got this object being declared, and again, they're using Tailwind here just to show you how this works. And then you actually pass it in as a function instead, your body class name, and you're telling it, hey, these are the things I want you to use. The documentation is just great on this. You've got style components as well, if you prefer to do it that way. Here they show how to pass in CSS classes to props. You can also style the entire thing from scratch or even inject your own styles on demand. You just have to call this function, inject style that you import from React Toastify. Super easy to work with. So let's use just one of those different options that we saw to kind of overwrite this and get this working the way we want. Let's come inside here. We're going to add a style tag and pass in an object where we set the background color to something like pink. Now, if I come over here and click, maybe there we go. The background that that's for the entire toast container. You can see that that's what we can set the style on because this is the actual React component. Um, but I just wanted to show you how that is done. All right, so let's back out of this now. All right, so let's figure out exactly what I was doing wrong over here. Let's see. Again, I think I am grabbing the right thing, but I'm adding it in this app CSS, and I wonder if I should be adding it. I think it's being overridden by this import down here. So let's go ahead and make sure that this shows up after this, uh, this CSS import right here. Then I'm going to go ahead and open up my index.css file, and let's go ahead and add it down this way. And I think that should work. So just a specificity problem. If I click here, yeah, there we go. So now we get this ugly color. But you can see how it's easy to override those, assuming that you actually pay attention to specificity. Well, I hope this has been a helpful, quick introduction to a tool that you may not have known about, and that you got an understanding of how to manipulate it to get it to do exactly what you want, and even how to get it to properly show the CSS you want it to show. Well, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.